Hi, I'm Tony Hay, and I'm going to tell you some stories about Richard Feynman and computing. The first one I'd like to tell is about his time at Manhattan, uh, the Manhattan Project Los Alamos for the atomic bomb. Uh, and there was a problem. They were doing calculations for the plutonium implosion bomb, and there was a bottleneck. They weren't being done fast enough. So they gave Feynman charge of the IBM team. But this was a time before computers, so IBM things were calculators, sorters, uh, multipliers, and so on, and decks of cards. And Feynman looked at this and analyzed the problem and actually realized you could get several problems going around at the same time with different decks of cards. So he invented, if you like, parallel computing and changed the problem completely. Instead of three calculations in nine months, his team then did nine calculations in three months and transformed the thing. And this is still the principle of vector supercomputers today. The, the second story I'd like to say is about probably his greatest gift to computing, and it indicates how much he liked to compute rather than theorems, and it was about his Feynman diagrams. It's difficult to believe that they were once, you know, we now accept them, but they were actually not accepted at the time because he talked about positrons as negative energy electrons going backwards in time. But uh, at an American Physical Society meeting, uh, a guy named Murray Slotnick came and gave a talk, and he talked about how these different electron-nucleon interactions differed, and Oppenheimer got up from the audience and said, uh, Professor Slotnick, your, theory, your calculations must be wrong because they violate Case's theorem. And Slotnick's never heard of Case's theorem, so Oppenheimer kindly said, you can remedy your ignorance tomorrow afternoon when Professor Case presents his theorem. So uh, Feynman went home that night and did the calculations using his techniques, and he sought out Slotnick the next day and said, can we compare? I did your calculations last night. Slotnick said, it took me six months. He said, I've got these techniques, see? And, and so he, they compared notes, and what's this thing? Oh, it's the scattering angle. It took me six months to do a uh, zero-degree scattering angle. But in the end, Feynman showed that he agreed with Slotnick, and at the end of Case's talk, Feynman got up from the audience and said, um, I checked Slotnick's calculations last night. I agree with Slotnick, and your, your theorem must be wrong. And then he knew he'd really done something that nobody else had. Feynman, in his last years of his life, lectured about computing, and this is uh, the Feynman Lectures on Computing, which I had the privilege to edit. It started with an invitation from Ed Fedkin to give a talk at the Physics of Computation Conference in 1981, where Feynman talked about the problems of simulating nature. Nature is intrinsically quantum mechanical, and if you try and do a quantum mechanical simulation, uh, the Hilbert space goes enormously and it just becomes impractical. So he invented a quantum computer, which I'll come to later. He also talked at the unconventional venues like Eslin, which is an alternative therapy in Big Sur, talking to a whole bunch of new age people, interesting videos you can see. The lectures he gave at Caltech were about the limitations of computing due to mathematics, due to uh, thermodynamics where you had reversible computing, you could calculate and uncalculate, uh, due to noise, due to en energy, and due to quantum mechanics. And he realized that the quantum computer was not a Turing machine, it could do other things. He didn't pursue that, but that he did recognize that. And the other thing that he was not concerned about was about the energy loss that we have in our chips that use so much energy, and that's because from his thermodynamic calculations, he'd looked at the limits, and the switches in today's chips are, are 10 billion times more inefficient than they need be, and so he felt engineers should be ashamed of themselves. And in the future, I think when we get to nanosystems such as Stan Williams with his Memristor, you'll see very much lower energy. And Feynman, of course, was a great communicator. I first came across him with the Cornell lectures in 1960s on the character of physical law. And Bill Gates, being Bill Gates, took one of these videos on vacation and liked it so much that he went, spent the next few years tracking down the copyright so he could make it available to everybody. And I do recommend the character of physical law as some wonderful lectures. I arrived at Caltech, fresh from Oxford, and I discovered rapidly that you know, Europe doesn't exist uh, in, Oc in Caltech, let alone um, Oxford. Uh, and this was in the, um, the Caltech newspaper, Four Kings and the Joker, the five Nobel Prizes. And Feynman didn't just dress differently, he clearly thought differently. And this is this uh, epitomized by this Apple advert I saw on the wall in San Francisco, huge picture of Feynman thinking differently. And I rather like this, this summary of Feynman in James Gleick's biography. He believed in the primacy of doubt, not as a blemish on our ability to know, but in the essence of knowing. Thanks very much.